What's up guys, it's Yash and in this video I'll be showing you guys on how to launch a successful Facebook ads campaign step by step for your e-commerce or for your Shopify dropshipping store. Now I've spent multiple seven figures for my e-commerce brands through Facebook ads and I can definitely say this is going to be one of the most detailed and informative Facebook ads tutorial so you can go ahead and successfully launch your e-commerce product for your online store. With that being said, ladies and gents, make sure you guys do drop a like on this video and while you're at it, feel free to also subscribe to the channel with that post notification bell turned on because I do post new videos every single Wednesday. With that being said, let's hop onto my computer so we can go ahead and get started with this Facebook ads tutorial. All right, so we are now in the ads manager and before we start running ads or set up our first campaign or anything like that, we have to make sure the back end is properly set up in terms of the events and the pixel working properly as well. If you guys already did not know, with Apple's new iOS 14 update, a lot of the tracking and other stuff is limited on Facebook. So this will basically ensure and maximize everything is working properly on the back end. So we're gonna go over here on the top left and click on the menu or where it says all tools. After that, click on events manager. Once we click on events manager, you should already see your pixel right here. This is a test store. It says Revelix pixel. You can really name it whatever you'd like and then just click on save just for your reference. We're going to go ahead and click on aggregated event measurement. As you can see, this is a new feature, you know, as iOS 14 is currently out. Once we do click on that, click on manage events and we're going to click on this drop down. So you should basically have all these events set up from the top to the bottom, from lowest priority to highest priority. View content, add to cart, initiate checkout, add payment info and purchase. And for assets, you should have all the pixels selected as well. In this case, it's obviously the same pixel, which is Revelix pixel, what you guys saw before. Click on back once you guys have all that set up and we're gonna go ahead and click on settings. Now this is very, very important where it says turn on automatic advanced matching. We're gonna make sure this is toggled on. Click on this drop down right here and make sure all of these are turned on as well. After that, go on over here to the middle where it says track events automatically without code. Make sure that is toggled on too. And then last but not least, if you already did not see Shopify over here as a connected partner, just make sure you click on choose a partner and Shopify should be right there. So this is very, very important. Like I said, to ensure everything is maximized on the back end in terms of the pixel recording and picking up certain events through your ads once they do start running actively. So right after that, we're gonna click back on tools or the menu and click on ads manager. And you guessed it, this is where the fun part starts to come. Now ignore these two campaigns, this is just to warm up the ads manager and this is more of a case study, more of a tutorial ad account that I have for the YouTube channel. But what we're going to do is click on create and then the objective of the campaign will be conversions. We always, always, always do conversions when it comes to e-commerce. All these other, just ignore them. Most of them are for other types of businesses and whatnot. So we're gonna go ahead and click on conversions now this is very important right we want to make sure that we're nice and organized in our ads manager right from the beginning right from the get-go so let's say you're testing your first dropshipping product congrats that's super exciting we're going to go ahead and write the date so let's put december or 12 15 the name of the product so let's just do product xyz you'll later see the example product I am using for this tutorial, then we're going to do cold test one, right? This is the first cold test, the first initial test for this campaign. And then we're going to do CBO, which also stands for campaign budget optimization. Click on continue. Make sure, you know, all this is just a default buying type auction 
campaign objective is conversions as we just selected. A-B test, skip that. Now this CBO is what we're going to go ahead and enable right over here. Campaign budget optimization, turn that bad boy on. So basically if y'all didn't know, CBO, like I mentioned, stands for campaign budget optimization, where the budget is set at the campaign level, where the optimization actually is at the campaign level or dictates from the campaign level. So let's say you have multiple ad sets within your campaign. Let's say your campaign is $85 or $100 per day, in which case what you definitely should be having. So let's do $85, for example. I usually recommend starting out with 85 or hundred dollars a day depending on your budget the higher the budget the more budget that is set the more quickly you can basically go ahead and acquire that data but like i was saying with cbo let's say we have about seven ad sets in this case we will have seven ad sets the 85 dollars will go ahead and spend throughout those seven ad sets meaning facebook will decide how much money each ad set will go ahead and spend. Facebook's artificial intelligence, it's AI, and machine learning is super, super, super smart. So we're basically giving Facebook more power, Facebook that upper hand for them to decide where to allocate our budget to the ad sets, the seven ad sets that we're going to have within our campaign, our CBO campaign. You see, Facebook is just moving towards this way. Facebook really, really likes when you give them the upper hand, when you give them more power to make those executive decisions, so-called. So once we do have that at $85 a day, make sure where it says campaign bid strategy, it says lowest cost, click on more options, run ads at all time. That means your ads will be running all day, all long, unless you go ahead and stop them or turn them off. Click on next, we're going to go ahead and come on to ad set name just a little bit after. For conversions, make sure it says website, right? That is where we are driving traffic to, that's where we are leading traffic to at the end of the day. Pixel, make sure the right pixel is selected. And for conversion event, we're going to go ahead and do purchase, right? We are optimizing this for purchase as that is the end result we want people to go through with, right? We want people to convert. We want people to purchase from our website. Click on X, don't be intimidated by any other signs or messages Facebook does give you. It just does that naturally sometimes, but just ignore it. Where it says start date, we're going to do December 15th at 12 a.m., right? We always want to schedule any new campaigns, any new ad sets or ads even at 12 a.m. during the start of the day. We want them to spend evenly throughout the day so they optimize better. For example, if they start at a random time during the day at 7 or 8 a.m., then guess what? You're missing a potential pool of customers from 12 a.m. to 7 or 8 a.m. It's almost a waste of 7 or 8 hours. So now, Facebook's going to spend your $85 from 8 a.m. to 12 a.m. compared or instead from 12 a.m. to 12 a.m. within that full 24 hour cycle. So we did December 15th at 12 a.m. There is no end date. So we're gonna go ahead and scroll down and click on show more options and click where it says ad set spend limit. Where it says maximum, don't touch anything there. Where it says daily minimum, we're going to do $5. So essentially, stay with me here. This means that each ad set will have a fair chance of spending each ad set will definitely spend five dollars at the bare minimum and then the cbo will decide where to spend the additional amount of the budget so if we have seven ad sets each ad set is a hundred percent spending five dollars right five 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 so on and so forth so 35 dollars will definitely be spent you know divided by the seven of the ad sets hence or thus five dollars each and then the rest of the $85 budget, the CBO will come over and decide where to spend the additional budget towards the remaining of the seven ad sets. So we just wanna do this so each ad set gets a fair chance of spending. Sometimes an ad set will only spend like a dollar or two or three dollars. It usually happens for a reason. That means that Facebook doesn't want that ad set or that specific group of audience 
you know, spending all of your money or really seeing your ads. But at the end of the day, when you do have a new ad account, a new pixel that isn't really warmed and nurtured and seasoned before, we do want to give an equal amount to every single ad set. And honestly, this is something that I do all the time, even when I start running ads for multiple products months down the line on a specific ad set. After that, ladies and gents, we're going to go ahead and click on this X. Again, any message that you see, any pop up that you see, don't be confused or intimidated by it. Mostly it's just Facebook recommending stuff or just reminding you about stuff like I mentioned before, where it says custom audiences, ignore that completely. For locations, we're going to go ahead and click on edit and we're going to do the top five or the tier five countries. These are the countries with the most credit card spenders and online shoppers. So we're going to do the US, also known as the United States. We're going to do Canada. We are going to do what else? Australia. We're going to do New Zealand. And we are going to also do the United Kingdom, right? So these five countries, like I said, guys, have quality bars that are actually going to spend money. Now, where it says locations, this is very important. We're going to go in and click on this drop down and press people living in this location, right? We only want to target and show our ads to residents of that country. For example, let's say hypothetically, you know, you live in Australia and I live in the US and I come to Australia to come visit you for business or for leisure. I really wouldn't want, you know, or, you know, or someone else wouldn't really want for me to see their ads because I'm probably not even going to be in that intent or in that nature of buying something because like I said, I'm, I'm there for leisure or for entertainment, right? So we only wanna target current residing people in that country in real time. For age guys, we wanna leave a default to 18 to 65 plus. Sometimes for products that are of certain nature like therapeutic products or massage products, you know, I'll do 23 to 65, but you never want to assume in general, you always want to let the data do the talking. So if you're unsure, if you're not certain about your product and the audience or the ideal customer for that product, that's completely okay. Just leave it 18 to 65 plus. Now for genders, again, let the data do the talking. We're going to do all for genders, unless it's like makeup or beauty or very, very, very extremely gender one-sided or gender biased then do, you know, woman, for example, but usually if it's a gender neutral product, a unisex product, which anyone can really use, I go ahead and just click on all, which are most dropshipping products. Where it says detail targeting, we're gonna go ahead and come back to the interest in just a little bit, right? This is the interest or the audience that this specific ad set is going to go ahead and target. But what we do wanna do is we wanna exclude drop shipping and aliexpress so yes we don't have the interest selected just yet that is going to go here on the top where it says include people who match but we're going to do exclude people who match drop shipping and aliexpress we don't want these individuals like myself and yourself to see drop shipping ads right they're not going to buy or we're not going to buy any products because we already know that you know these are drop shipping products or an e-commerce store more so so where it says languages we're going to do english all we only want english speaking users to see our ads as our ads are going to be in english and our shopify stores are also going to be in english and then one more thing i will mention excluding aliexpress and crop shipping the benefits of that is that you'll get better metrics right not only will those people not see your ads but as a result you'll get better cost per clicks cpcs and better cost per 1000 impressions cpms because again it's really extracting and pulling away from those lesser quality of an audience who may be interested or familiar with AliExpress or drop shipping. Where it says connections, all people, placements, we wanna do automatic placements that is recommended by Facebook. Again, we wanna give Facebook that upper hand. Everything else guys, just ignore. Optimization for ad delivery, make sure that says conversion, super, super important. Sometimes it will say, um, you know, landing page views or something like that. Cost control, ignore that, we're not there yet. Attribution settings, seven day after clicking or one day view, leave that as default once again. When you get charged, that is also going to be impression. Anyway, let's scroll up and let's go to the interest, right? This is very, very, very 
important as to what our targeting will be for that ad set. So obviously you need a product that you're going to go ahead and push. For the purpose of this video, I'll be utilizing a robot line drawing tie. This was actually a previous winning product of mine for my Shopify stores last quarter four or Q4, but basically I'll pop up a listing or a video of it somewhere on the screen, but basically you draw a line or anything on a piece of paper and the robot will go ahead and follow that I think it's super cool. So now we have the product. Now what I want to know is who is my ideal buyer, aka the uh, you know the market persona or the buyer persona of the exact product, right? Who is buying this product? Obviously it's for kids, but a seven, eight, or nine year old isn't gonna go ahead and buy this product, right? I hope not. Most likely, more so parents, adults are going to buy this for their kids, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, younger children. So I'm going to be marketing this for parents, right? Or to parents, I would say, you know, parents are buying this for their kids as a Christmas gift and whatnot during the holiday season. That is when I was selling this toy. But the main reason why I'm explaining this is so you really dig deep into your product and know who to target, right? Because that is how well you're going to get those first initial results based on your targeting, AKA based on your interests. So the first thing I can think of is Lego, right? Think of it like this, ladies and gents, your interest is X. Who will be interested into X? They'll be also interested in buying or purchasing your product. X can be an actress, actor, celebrity, movie, TV show. We're gonna go ahead and click on right here. The audience size will dictate right here where it says audience definition on the bottom right. And we want that to be over 2 million. In this case, it's 12.7 to 14.9 million. So that is just in our range. If it makes it easier, you can go ahead and think like this in your head. Make the interest X, right? So Lego is X. Who will be interested into X? That will be also interested in buying or purchasing my product. Again, use Google, use your logic, do some research, you know, look at some brands, but really, really, really dig deep into your interests and really think about who is the proper fit in terms of buying the product based on the interest. Don't always think of generic interests like toys because a lot of advertisers are lazy out there. So we wanna think beyond that scope and think of other unique interests as well and not only generic interests because this will give you very high CPMs and not the best metrics. And as a result, it will give you poor results for your marketing campaign. So now we have our interests. We go ahead and we scroll up and we name the ad set our interest, which is Lego, right? So we'll go ahead and we'll click on next. Now make sure your Facebook page and your Instagram page are both connected on the back end in business settings. We're going to go ahead and click on add preview. And for ad name, we're going to do video one. We're going to have two videos or two creatives in total. We never want to put all our eggs and all our bets into one creative only, ladies and gents. We always want to split test because this Lego audience or this Lego ad set can react completely different to video one compared to video two. Maybe it's a better response to video one. Our next ad set that, well, that we're going to shortly set up may like video two way better and can respond to video two a lot better than video one compared to how the Lego ad set will do. So let's go ahead and name this video one. Now really quickly, I'm just going to go ahead and upload the video and also the ad copy as well where it says format. We're going to do single image or video. So very quickly, I'm going to go ahead and upload the video and also the ad copy, which consists of the primary text, headline and description. And then I'll go ahead and break the video down and the ad copy down very, very quickly. So you guys can use it as a template and a guideline. All right, so we now have the ad copy and the video both uploaded. I'm going to go ahead and play the video really quickly so you guys can get a proper idea of what that consists of and what the product is. So it's pretty cool as you guys can see. Usually I like to have the video anywhere between 10 to 30 seconds. 
I don't like to have it too short nor too long. Now, if you're wondering where I get my high converting e-com creatives or ads from, I actually utilize e-com creations for multiple years. They have great customer support, a great turnaround time, and as you can see, they are in fact really good at what they do. So I'll be leaving a link to Ecom Creations down in the description below. And if you do utilize my code YASH10, you will also get 10% off on every single order. So back to the video, there it is, as you guys can see. Now keep in mind the first one to three seconds are very important, right? That is called the scroll stopper. Facebook and Instagram are forms of interruptive marketing, so you have to make sure you have that pattern interruption and that first one to three seconds is where you can really make sure that you grasp your potential customer's attention for them to continue finding out about your product, reading your ad copy, let alone watching the rest of your video. So that is the video or that is the first video at least. The ad copy, here it is. The primary text is what you see here on the top. That is the most important. I don't like to have this too long either. It depends from product to product, but this is what I have for this product at least. So the first blurb is the hook, right? It hooks people. It grabs people attention, right? Wanting, wanting them to read more. So that reads this magic inductive drawline robot. I mentioned the product. Let's children develop creative thinking, imagination, precise drawing skills, and even timekeeping. Notice I have the first letter of each word capital. That is very important. Now the second blurb, you can choose to have another sentence or two, or you can have bullet points or something like that. In this case, I have makes the perfect children's gift for the little one this Christmas. Not to mention you'll have a ton of fun also with a little call to action, 50% off sale, with a nice short URL, you can use URL shortener, tiny URL, bit.ly, any of these are completely fine to go ahead and utilize. It just basically makes sure it's nice and succinct and concise and fits in the last line and does not go to the second one. The headline, I like to put something that directly relates or correlates to the product, right? That makes a bold statement. A lot of people like to put the name of the product here, but I'd rather just include it in the primary text, usually in the hook, just like how I have right here, and utilize this space for something else more direct. So here I have emoji, metal emoji, rated number one toy of 2022. Description, I have 8,700 plus happy kids. Over here, I like to put something of urgency, trust, or scarcity. You can have limited time only. Hurry, act now, only 250 pieces available. Or you can have something like, 245 pieces bought in the last 24 hours. Again, something of urgency, scarcity, or trust is totally okay. So this is typically how I go about my ad copy. Don't use too many emojis. Don't you know make it overkill. You wanna keep it nice and precise, and more so come off as a professional brand, a professional store. People are very cautious of where they're putting their money now when it comes to online shopping and e-commerce in general. You know, they're very attentive about these things. So two, three, four emojis, that's completely fine. Make sure your spelling, grammar, spacing, overall congruency is on point. And then where it says call to action, I like to put shop now. You can also put, um, where is it, get offer, but usually shop now works best for e-commerce. You can obviously put your website URL, that will be your landing page, AKA your product page in most cases. If you have multiple products, maybe a collection page, for example, for clothing or for multiple variants, maybe an option, but usually it's just one single product page. Everything else, ladies and gents, just keep at default. None of this really is of our concern. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is upload the second video. So we're going to go ahead and click on these three dots, press on duplicate, right? We're duplicating another ad within this same Lego ad set. And once that duplicates, we're going to go ahead and change this to video two, right? So really quick, I'm just gonna go ahead and upload that for you guys. So we're gonna go ahead and remove or you can in fact go to just change video and upload the second one. Robot two, open. 
let that upload and then really quick i'll play the video for you guys all right so this is the second video this is about you know 20 to 30 seconds the last one was 10 to 15 seconds but that's the main purpose of split testing this one has different music a different scroll stopper if you are split testing make sure it does have a different scroll stopper it has more faster clips and frames and whatnot so you know that's super cool so just so you guys can see those are the two videos I am indeed utilizing. What we're going to do after is either press publish or if you want to be safe and make sure nothing is saved in draft and everything does publish, just click here on close in the top left and press on publish draft items. Bada bing, bada boom. So now we have our campaign. We have, I'm just going to wait till that publishes or uploads. Awesome. Just refresh that, cool. Ad sets, it should say schedule, and then ads, right? We have two ads or two creatives within the Lego ad set. Video one, video two, right now it says processing, then it'll say in review, and then it'll say schedule once it does get approved by Facebook. So now we need six more ad sets. Remember, we have seven ad sets in total within our CBO campaign. So what we're going to do is Make sure the campaign is selected, the right one. Make sure the ad set is also selected over here. Nothing really has to be selected. And we're going to do duplicate, number of copies, six. So now Lego is going to be duplicated six times, but guess what? Everything else is going to be copied over, not only in the ad set level, but also the ads are going to copy over as well, right? So now the rest of the six ad sets are going to consist of both video one and video two, within those ad sets as well so click on x this is the original one down here these six one two three four five six are copies so let's work from the bottom up right so now ladies and gents all we really have to do is change out the interest sometimes i like using suggestions so we can always put um i know i said not to use always generic you know interests but using one or two generic interests is totally fine just don't make them all generic. So let's just put toys and then boom, toys, right? We're going to name that toys and you'll see that update. The third one from the bottom, let's do parents. We can actually target parents. So we can target parents, uh, maybe not parents all, but maybe parents with preschoolers. We can also do parents with early school age children, six to eight. And let's also do, I think, nine to 12, and let's get rid of the old ones. So we can do parents, right? This is just more so for your reference. Parents with kids, three to 12, right? And this audience size is good. It's about 3.7 to 4.3 million. The toys one was also good. Let's see, it's 60 to 70 million. So that one's pretty good as toys is a very broad interest, right? Let's go to the fourth one. Let's go ahead and put um, early or early childhood. I like that one, right? Because this is something that also educates kids and makes them proactive and whatnot, you know, gets them creative. So this one is 4.5 to 5.3 million. That is perfect. Early childhood, let's name that. We have three more, including this one. We can also put childcare. Again, these are just coming on the top of my head because I've been doing this so long. I've been testing a lot of kids' products, you know, for multiple Q4. Um, this one is 16.5 to 19.4 million. So that is good. Again, remember, anything above 2 million is good. And again, it can be 100 million, 200 million. It does not really matter. Most of them will be between 10 to 100 million based off of my experience. Let's click on suggestions over here and see if we can you know find anything else let's do actually a brand hasbro is a great kids toys brand um and we'll do that and i just want to double check the audience size 7.2 to 8.4 million now guys just really quick usually i don't stack target meaning i don't have multiple you know interest per ad sets i only recommend one per ad set but since these are so, 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 so extremely similar, it's okay, right? So there are certain instances where you can stack target, but usually I don't like to. Let's put um, toddler, actually let's put education. Let's see what comes with education. So we can put early childhood education. I actually like that. That is very relevant, right? 
That's 12.2 to 14.3 million. Boom. I like to just capitalize stuff because I am a little bit OCD, I can't lie. So boom, close, publish, draft items. So now we'll go ahead and let that publish. Sometimes it can take a few minutes depending on the speed of your internet. Make sure you don't have a lot of tabs or you know a lot of windows and applications running when you are dealing with Facebook ads, especially when you have dozens and dozens of things going on at once in terms of campaigns and ad sets later down the road when you do get to that point, right? Just a little FYI or tip. So now we have this one campaign and we have seven ad sets, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Each has two, right? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. So we have 14 ads or 14 creatives in total, as you guys can see, ladies and gents. Now the last thing I like to do simultaneously is I will set up one more campaign and this is called the open no targeting strategy. This has been very, very powerful on Facebook. So what I just did is I copied the campaign name and you'll see where I'm going with this. Now this strategy usually works very good with products that are broad, products that are mass targetable and mass approachable that don't have a lot of limitations, attaches and uh, you know hindrances or anything like that towards them, right? Products that almost anyone can buy regardless of beliefs or interests or geographic locations or age or gender. I think something like this is pretty broad if you ask me, you know, I think almost anyone can buy toys for their little ones that they have in their lives. So we'll go ahead to ad sets. Now click on any one ad set. We'll just go to the first one and we're going to press duplicate into new campaign. We're going to set up a whole new campaign and paste this, but this is going to be an ABO ad set, ad set budget optimization where each ad set gets its own budget compared to CBO where there's only one budget assigned to the campaign level overall, right? So we're going to basically duplicate that into a new campaign so everything carries over and we don't have to set up everything all over again. So we're going to duplicate this ad set three times, Lego, Lego, Lego into a brand new ABO ad set budget campaign. So that is being duplicated. Just press X on this. Now you'll see this, but don't freak out. This is actually one message or one pop-up where you should be actually be uh, doing something with this. So we're gonna scroll down and where it says edit, where you're just going to press on landing page views and then go back to conversions and boom, it should go away, all errors resolved. That just basically happens because we're duplicating a CBO campaign into an ABO campaign, right? So now what we're gonna do is from the top, Make it at $7 or at $10. So each ad set will be seven or $10. It's super low budget. There's really nothing to lose. Now what we're going to do is come on down and the only country that we're going to leave is the US, right? We're only going to do US. Part of the strategy, trust the process. Now for targeting or for interest, we're going to have none. That's why it's called open no targeting, right? And then everything else will basically be the same. So now what we're going to do is type in open no targeting one. Each ad set is absolutely the same guys, but each ad set will pull to a different audience, right? It will reach a different audience. So this is the second one and this is the third one. Boom. So now you'll see it make a little bit more sense once they're both separated. Just let that publish. Three, two, one. There we go. So now we have the we have the CBO with seven, and then we have the separate one, the ABO, with three, right? Each is exactly the same. And as you can see, the ads already carried over, right? The ads should already carry over. So sometimes it actually takes a second. In that case, you just refresh it or you know you just reset ads manager and that should fix it. So let's take another view because the ads did not show up. So let's select all of them. Boom, two, four, six, right? Each of them has two, and it's the same two videos, the same uh, ad copy, everything. The only difference is the targeting at the ad set level, right? And now last but not least, guys, our columns are very important. So we wanna customize our columns and have clicks, cost per click, CTR, right? Click-through rate, this I usually like having between two and 4% for cold audiences. Cost per click, a good cost per click 
is below a dollar. CPM cost per 1,000 impressions, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, cost per 1,000 impressions. You want to do add to cart, the total number of add to cart, the total number of add payment info, the cost per add payment info, the cost per add to cart, how much is it costing you per add to cart, per add payment info. Same thing with checkouts initiated, the total, meaning the number of checkouts initiated, and the cost, right? How much is it costing us per initiate checkout? Then we wanna do ROAS, return on ad spend, the most important metric. How much money is Facebook spitting back at you compared to how much you're putting in? And then last but not least, purchases, right? The cost per purchase, or your cost per acquisition, or cost per customer. How much does it cost you to attain one customer? And the value, meaning, let's say you get 10 sales, and those 10 sales add up to $400, right? So that's the value of it. So. You can go ahead and you know drag it around based on your preference. I just like to leave it like this, make sure all of this is checkmarked and then save as preset. And we can just do whatever, Facebook ads, e-com, right? Let's just do e-com and apply. So now you can just basically click on e-com and all of your important metrics, your KPIs will be right here at exactly what you need, ladies and gents. So. There you guys have it. You guys are all set up with your campaign. And this is how you exactly go ahead and set up Facebook ads to test and launch products for your Shopify store or better yet for your e-commerce brand in 2022 and onwards. I hope this was informative and helpful, ladies and gents. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you guys do have any questions, thoughts, or concerns, Feel free to leave them in the comments down below because I do reply to each and every single one of them. Furthermore, guys, check out all the links and resources in the description down below because they can and certainly will be very, very helpful for Shopify or for your e-commerce store. Other than that, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate each and every single one of you. Remember to keep working hard and more importantly, stay being awesome. With that being said, your boy is out. Peace.